Hello and welcome back to 3D modeling for 3D printing. I am showing you how to modify your Pepicura or video game files and getting them ready for 3D printing. I've already applied a solidify modifier to this helmet and in order to clean up its topology and get rid of any extra vertices and faces inside of this, not necessarily inside the shell but inside the solidified surface. I went ahead and used NetFab. They are a good service. They have a nice cloud service that will automatically do everything that you need. It'll clean it up nice and neat and get this ready for slicing up into pieces. Alright, in order to do this we need to, and plus whenever they do that they it after you export then it's automatically going to apply your scale back to one, but keep your dimensions. So let's Go back to quads. Quads are a lot nicer to slice than tries. All right, so let's go ahead and start our Boolean modifiers. Now we're going to be uh, starting out with a difference. The nice thing about modifiers that you can have more than one working at a time. So we're going to need three for this. In order to activate those three, we're actually going to need to add a plane and with this plane we're actually going to need it larger than this helmet so our helmet is somewhere around 400 millimeters it's actually less than 400 and that's why we're choosing 400 so the dimensions of the helmet are 374 and a half millimeters at its longest in the y direction so 400 of course is going to pass through all the intersecting areas that we need. So let's go ahead and move this halfway up our model. Let's duplicate that. Rotate on the x-axis 90 degrees. Let's duplicate that one. And rotate on the z-axis 90 degrees. Okay. So what does this do? This will section it off into eight different sections. So what we want to do is apply our boolean modifiers to each one of these planes. So let's go ahead and select our helmet. We've already started our differences. Plane, plane 1, and plane 2. So what that results is one eighth of the helmet right here. And I've got some extra faces over here, but I can clean them up later. Okay, so like I said before, we do not need to apply each of these modifiers. Let's go ahead and apply them anyways, just so you can see what our final resulting mesh is. Which, if you if you can see. I've got some extras right here and extras down here. So that's easy to clean up. Just tab into edit mode. Deselect everything. Select everything right here. A. Invert. And delete all those vertices. Tab. So now I'm only left with this one little corner right here. and looking at it I've got a nice smooth surface on this side and in the middle on both middles actually so it's nice and smooth I can uh, and at the bottom and I can orient this however I want on the build platform as long as it's gonna fit within my build area now no matter what I'm probably gonna end up having to print this with uh, support, so that's going to go through a lot of plastic. But that's probably the only way that you're going to end up getting a good result. In order to minimize the amount of plastic you might, and the the amount of supports that you're going to be using, instead of supporting this overhang right here, you might rotate this. Was that X ninety? Actually, that's negative ninety. 
so you might print it vertical so that will help prevent having to support all this over here it's gonna end up printing sideways like this and the only supports that you'll probably end up having to print is right here and the extreme areas probably in this section right here okay so let's go ahead and undo everything that we just applied and let's bring back our our uh, modifiers okay so like I was saying before you don't need to apply these in order to export since we are switching this in uh, cutting this into eight pieces each time that we export this well export STL so each time that we export this we're gonna want to name it with a number numbering each one of them so helmet one helmet one's a good number export STL and that's gonna keep each one of our numbers separate so each time that you change the orientation of each one of these planes is actually gonna change which quadrant of our helmet is going to be exported so to do this we can do it a couple different ways again it's up to you how you like to do your workflow we can normals flip normals of that plane that's going to end up with this side control Z we can actually rotate this in the Z axis 180 degrees that just flip my normal to this side like that Control Z uh, we can scale this in the Z direction negative one that flip my side so however you want to do it is up to you there there's really no wrong answer just as long as you get it switched around and oh wait yeah I forgot another option your other option which one is it? is plane 2 okay so your other option is find which one has plane 2 on it plane point zero zero two if you want to be technical and find since we used a difference we're gonna we can change that to intersect intersect is the using the opposite normals of the object that you're applying it to alright so once again we do not need to apply these file export STL. All right, we already have the first one numbered helmet one dot STL. Now we can go in, select it, manually change it, and however we want. So another way of keeping track of which number you're actually on, say you had to put this down and you forgot whether or not you renamed it or not, just go ahead and uh, it's got a plus sign right here uh, clicking on that will automatically jump the last number to the next number up so if this was helmet uh, 23 that would have been helmet 24 so export STL so just gotta work your way around so the next one we can change this one to an intersect that's got the backside file export STL export file export for Difference uh, export STL five difference down here file STL six. Okay. Now we need 7 and 8, which is these two right here. So it's just a matter of getting it in the right order 
of which ones you need. Nope. So let's go back to difference. This one. Intercept. There we go. File. Export. Number seven. And STL number eight. Okay, with all that done, we can go ahead and delete everything from this. Got our eight segments, and now we can import all of our STL files. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All eight pieces import STL. Z. And if you look carefully, you can actually see the seams of each one. So if I select this one, it's actually separate than the rest of it. Now you can try to print more than one piece together as long as you can fit them all on the build platform. I do not actually recommend that. Uh, after you do print them, then you're going to want to glue them back together and I'll show you a neat, neat little trick to help align them in the next lesson.